Good morning and welcome to Faith University. My name is LaShawn Gant and today's lesson will focus on God's gracious rewards. And our scripture reference is coming from Matthew 20 verses 1 through 16. And the golden text is coming from Matthew 20 and 4. And the word of the Lord reads, And he said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. God, we thank you for another chance, another opportunity to say yes to your will and to your way. Now, God, I pray, God, that as we go into this lesson, God, that you would speak a word that would change the trajectory of someone's life. God, to change our perspective, oh God, to let us know, oh God, that there's no big eyes and there's no little use, but God, that we work together for the good of you. We work together as a union, oh God, so that you would get the glory. God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Here in this gospel of Matthews, in fact, the gospel of Matthews contains numerous parables that Jesus used in his teaching ministries. The parable of the of the laborers in the vineyard teaches that we receive from God, teaches that what we receive from God is due solemnly because of his grace. The teaching of the Pharisees was that the people could earn God's favor by their righteous deeds. Jesus' story demonstrated that God compensates people according to his own goodness. So here in this lesson, we see when the laborers who have toiled the full day, they begin to complain that they should receive more than those who work for only a short time. The owner answered them, they have to receive what was promised. As the owner, he could treat others gracious if he choose so. So here Jesus took pictures. Here we see Jesus take pictures from everyday life to help his hearers understand how God works with people. By using familiar things in life, Jesus enables a, a wide range of people to comprehend the truth that he wanted them to learn. So here, Matthew, you see that there was a group of laborers who had worked all day. And then there was a group of laborers who had joined them in the last hour. So the group of laborers who have worked all day began to complain. And they felt as if because they worked and they toiled all day that they should be compensated for more. So this is where Matthew picks up in verse one. It reads, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into the vineyard. So here Jesus is continuing his discussion of salvation from verse 19 and 25 and the everlasting life from verses 19 and 29. He further explains that the kingdom of heaven is like in this parable. What Jesus wants us to do now is show the marvelous grace of God in salvation and given eternal life. What Jesus wants us to do now is to show the marvelous grace of God in salvation, where we see in this parable of the laborers in the vineyard. In John 15, 1 and 7, Jesus refers to himself as the true vine and his father as the husband, the vine keeper, the vine dresser, and the gardener. 
The household here is God himself, the master of the vineyard. These may also refer to like an employer or a farmer or the master or the owner of a house. The vineyard represents the mission field. Laborers are believers working, but each work differently. The kingdom needs laborers in the vineyard. The household goes out early in the morning at 6 a.m. at the break of day to hire laborers to work in his vineyard. It's prayer time if you want to get instructions. During this time, a Jewish day begin at 6 a.m. and they end at 6 p.m. So we go on to verse 2 and it declares... And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. So these 6 a.m. laborers are called first to come and labor in the vineyard. There's agreement that called, that came between the household and the laborers to receive a penny a day. Now, I don't know how many of us would work all day long from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for a penny a day. So here we see in this parable that this is the daily rate for days of work. This is the full wage. No extra overtime. No overtime or extra. You agreed to work for a full day. So if they were willing laborers, believing his promise, then they were going into the field to work. And they began, and they being in agreement with pay, were sent into the vineyard to work. So we see here that their, their belief preceded their work. They were eager to work and eager to receive pay. And he promised them. He sent them out and they served. The workers in God's vineyard can be described as a person who has decided to set himself apart for the service of God and strives to know him better in carrying out the will of God. Let us continue to verse three and, and it reads, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So the first time the householder, he went out was for the first hour, which was described as early in the morning. So that is similar to 6 a.m. So now it's the third hour, meaning that it's around nine o'clock. And the householder sees others standing idle in the marketplace. So every city has its labor's market where they hang out. And we see that even now where you see people hanging out at Home Depot. You see a whole variety of people hanging out around Home Depot of laborers who goes out early to look for work. And we can almost um, rest assured that those who are there at six o'clock in the morning are the ones that get called first. So here, God called is by grace and not by works. The third hour has come and there are still people standing idle. It is God who goes out to seek and call mankind. It is God who provides the work for a man. Jesus is still calling. Will you come? So God's vineyard is a place where we are kept from being idle to ensure you don't leave a that that you don't live a wasted and purposeless life. You are called upon to work for God. And after all you've done, you are rewarded for your labor of love. So God wants us as his people to work. He wants us to work and he don't want us to waste our life and live in a life without purpose, living our life tossed and driven, living a life don't know 
what our purpose is, living our life not knowing what our will from God is for our life, but he wants us to live a life that is full of purpose um, because our labor, we're going to be rewarded for the act, the things that we do. So when we go on to verse four, it says, and he said unto them, go ye into the vineyard and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. So there was no fixed amount agreed to pay these latecomers. So even the people that came late, there was no fixed amount. When the fourth day had already passed, and they, as they went into the vineyard, the householder just said, whatever is right, he will give it. And they just went. So if we look at uh, verse 19 and 27, the, the disciples had said when they responded and asked, we have left forsaken all and follow you. And what shall we get? This is what the disciples were saying to the Lord, that they have left and they forsaken everything and they follow God. So they wanted to know what shall they get? But for these workers, they did not ask nor negotiate. So to the household holder, it means that whatever is fair to him, he calls the shots. He makes the rule. So it's up to you whether you put in work with a smile or with a frown. It really didn't matter because they went out and it was whatever he gave them is what they was going to get. So they were eager to work. They were eager to receive pay no matter what it was. He promised to give. They believed and they served. He promised to give. Again, these are. this is very important that we grasp this, that God promised to give us. And we have to believe and serve. We have to believe and trust with faith, knowing that the labor that we do, God is going to reward us for our service. So God sees, and God sees the heart before we even start a job. A latecomer, the person who does not respond to God until later in life, must simply trust God to be fair and just. So it doesn't matter when you come. We just got to trust God that he will be fair and just. So number verse five, again, he went out about the sixth hour, the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. So here again, the householder came back about the sixth hour. So now it's 12 noon and it's about the ninth hour is referring to 3 p.m., and he repeated the same to them as he told the others that were called. He went back to the marketplace to get more workers. Each time he found more available laborers to join those who were already in the vineyard. With these later shifts, the laborers, the owner made the same agreement that he had made with them in the second shift. So here we see that the same agreement was made with the first and the second shift. So he simply promised to do what was right for them. They was happy with the terms and trusted the judgment of the owner. The workers proceeded to join those who had been toiling in the vineyard ever since early morning. God is generous and his gift of salvation and eternal life is available to anyone who believes and trusts in him. Whenever they believe, belief comes. So God, he has eternal salvation for everyone. We just got to believe and trust him. So as we look to verse six, and about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? So the household went out again, 
finding others standing idle. Even at the 11th hour, the 11th hour refers to the last minute. They are still waiting at 5 p.m. for someone to pick them. Can you imagine you're looking for work and you're ready to work and you've been out since 6 a.m. waiting for someone to pick your name, waiting for someone to choose you. And then you know that it's only one hour left and then God shows up. Doesn't that seem like it's a God moment when we have done all that we can, when we feel like all hope is lost, God would show up on time. So we did not know what these people have been doing. But no one hired them. They joined the rest of the laborers. Once again, the owner did not set a specific wage for them. They trusted him to give them whatever was right. They they had not given up. And they had nothing else to do. When that sometimes is like us, it's a God moment. We refuse to give up. It's nothing else that we can do. We just got to stand still and believe God. Stand still and know that when my back is up against the wall, that God is going to show up. We stand and still on his word, knowing that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So just as these people waited, standing in the market to be chosen, and God shows up, the household asked them a question to see where their minds was. Why are you staying here all day idle? For there is no excuse, excuse for such behavior. There are six types of laborers. There are six types of people. There are the willing and eager laborers who always out early looking for work. I'm going to ask you as I begin to read this, where do you find yourself in this, in these six areas of laborers? There are the idle ones who have little or if any entrance to work at all. There are the self-seeking or pleasure laborers who move around questioning the employer about what kind of work is to be done. We move around and ask the bishop what kind of work that we need, that we they want to seek and to be get done, but not under and but just doing stuff to be self-glorified. There are the slothful laborers who are just lazy and not interested in the full day's work. There are the complacent laborers, the slow movers who sleep late, move late, and always late getting into the marketplace. Lord Jesus, help us. There are the weak failures, are those who go to work at jobs that appeal to them and discover that the job is hard and difficult. So they walk away from their commitment and return back to the marketplace for something easy is how many of us said I can't do this no more I can't do this Christian life no more I just want to walk away and just be complacent I just want to walk away and just stay hurt I want to just walk away and give up and just find a better way of doing life so just reflect on that and in those six types of laborers and think about what type of labor are you seven says They said unto him, because no man had hired us, he said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. This reminds us, this reminds me of the man that was at the pool and answered, who said, but I have no one to put me in the water when the water is troubled. These men said the same thing because no one has hired us. It is now the 11th hour and the householder says, Go ye into the vineyard, whatsoever is right, that ye shall receive. They were hired long after the others and God offers a just wage. This is the grace of God in spite of 
of their deceptive excuses. And remember, this will be only but for one hour. Remember, despite them um, you coming up with excuses, God still remembered them and chose them, even if it was just for one hour. There is always an opportunity to work in God's vineyard. Now they have a di di direction and purpose. Everyone receives compensation reward. The offer stands open to go. And the offer stands open in your choice to do good or bad. God gives us a choice. He don't force us to do anything. God gives us an opportunity to say yes to his will and to his way. We have open will. Come thee, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So as we look at Matthew 20, verses 8 through 10 now, now God is about to compensate for the laborers. So verse 8 goes on and says, So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire beginning from the last until the first. So the evening has come and all the laborers are called to get their pay. God pays everyone out of a heart of grace. He doesn't pay reward. He doesn't pay, meaning he doesn't reward us on the basis of when you come, but he rewards us on the basis of his grace of his grace and his justice, but he calls the last first. He calls the last first. So there is an evening of time of death when we rest from our labor, when the servant passes from this life into the presence of God, he receives his reward of eternal life. God transports him into the, the Lord's presence and the believer is transformed into the image of Christ. He is calling all laborers to give them their reward. God is going to reward us for our work. And verse nine goes on to say, and when they came, they were hired about the 11th hour. They received every man a penny. So those that came the 11th hour, meaning the last minute to be hired for work, were cur what was called first to receive their pay, which was a penny. They only work one hour and he pays the late comers, the late comers a full wage. He pays the late comers a full wage. Those who waited late in life to say yes. Those who waited, they didn't work while they was young, but those who came late, he still gave them the same grace that he gave us who came early. He still gives everyone, the, he still gave them the same grace of those who has been working all of their life. He also he gave them eternal life. The ample payments to the late shifts demonstrate God's generosity. It was a measure of his grace and kindness to those who were undeserving. We all are undeserving. We all have done things that God wasn't pleased with, but God gave them the same wage as those who were working and torn all day. When he spoke of eternal life, God shows no preference, no matter how old or how long or last minute of serving him. It is God's known and his will. He gives no matter when we come, at the early call or at the 11th hour call. We go on to verse 10 and say, but when the first came, they suppose that they should have received more, like us, and they receive likewise every man a penny, every man a penny. Also, 
So also then there are those who were hired first, they came and likewise, they were paid a penny too, but they were thinking that they should have been received. They should have received more. However, that was the agreement. They all had the same agree agreement when they started working. It was nothing different. They all came and no matter the time that they came, they all was granted a penny. In verses 11 to 16, we see that the laborers begin to complain. So verse 11 goes on and say, and when they have received it, they murmur against the good man of the house. So first, the first workers begin to murmur against the, the good man of the house. You can complain all you want, but your word is your word. It was nothing that they could say. He said in the beginning that the agreement was that they was going to get a penny. They agreed to that amount. Note that the complaining by the earlier workers caused some to apply the parable to the relationship between God and the Jews and the Gentiles. The earlier workers responded, represented the Jews. They complained because God gives an equal pay reward and position in his kingdom to the Gentiles. So God did the same. God gave the Jews and the Gentiles the same. So as we look into verse 12, it begins to say, these last had wrath but one hour, and those made them equal unto us which had borne the burden and the heat all day. So here again, the first workers begin to say to the household that the last workers should not have been given the same equal pay that was given to them. The last workers only gave an hour of work and should not be equal with the first who did most of the burden of the work all day in the heat of the day. So complaints of envy and jealousy does not stand in the kingdom of God. I'm going to say that again. Complaints of envy or jealousy does not stand in the kingdom of God. You are never cheated working for God, for he is a just God. You are never cheated working for God because God is a just God. We go on to verse 13, but he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Does not thee agree with me for a penny? It only takes one person to speak out. It only takes one person to stir up confusion. This reminds me of when Jesus had told to Peter to feed his sheep. Then follow him. And in John 21 and 22 to 21, Peter seeing John beloved and asked Jesus, what shall this man do? He was worried about another man instead of what Jesus told him to do. Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until I return, what is it to you? Follow you. Follow me. Wow. Wow, Jesus spoke to one of the first laborers, and he still calls him friend, as if as to say, child, we're not going, to, child, we're not going to make this hard. He takes him back to the agreement that he made. He takes him back to the agreement that he made. He didn't say how long you work. He said, I'm going to give you what I feel is right what I feel is yes to give you. So that's why you have to have a clear understanding what you hear. You have to be clear of what you hear when Jesus speak, what you sign, what you say yes to, and let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you agree to it, there is no, there is no but. If you agree to it, there's no but. Verse number 14, take thee, take then thine is and go thine way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. 
and even as to thee. Take what belongs to you. Basically, God is saying, take what belongs to you and go. But I choose to give to this last man, the last hire, the same as I give to you. Jesus was very frank. Take your agreed wages and go. There is nothing left to be said. This is the will of the Lord. You are rewarded for your labor. Timothy 1, 5 and 18 says, You shall not muzzle an ox when it threads out the grain, and the labor is worthy of his wages. Number 15 goes on to say, It is not lawful for me to do what I will with my own. It is thine I evil because of I am good. God is not finished. And you can't fight against what the Lord desires to give that is already his. He even goes on to say, are you envious because I am generous? The first workers look with envy and ill will at the prosperity of others. God is gracious and his gift of salvation and eternal life are available to anyone who believe in him and trust him. Whether the belief comes at the beginning of a long life or just moments before someone dies. God is just. God is just. It doesn't matter when we say yes. It doesn't matter if we've been working all our life, as we've been serving all our life. He's going to give the same availability um, to the one that begins and to the one is just before him, his, his death. Verse 6, my final verse. So the last shall be first. Hallelujah. And the first last. For many may be called. But for many may be called, but few chosen. This is the last statement was made in 19 and 30. And Jesus brings it up again. So it must be pretty important. Remember, the disciples needed assurance of their salvation because it was hard for a rich man to even enter into heaven. Who shall he? be saved. Jesus gave them the assurance and promise, the reward of ruling and reigning with him and living forever. But Jesus wanted them to know that before they can judge others, they couldn't tell what was in a man who was to be highly rewarded and who was not. We can't tell what's in a man. We can't say because you, we think that a person has been living a hellish life, that we think because a person haven't been living right, haven't been rightly divided, dividing the word, haven't been faithful, haven't been uh, worthy all their life. We can't tell what God is going to grant them. They didn't know that the willing and eager laborer who immediately responded will expose a grumbling, jealous spirit. The late workers were eager and just happy to receive work and pay for only just an hour. The last shall be first and the first last. We have you processing yourself when you, let me go back again. The last shall be first and the first last. We have you processing yourself. When you fail to worship Christ day by day and consistently as the workers, when we fail to grow in the knowledge of Christ as eager as the late workers, when we fail to study the scripture and get in our words and pray as much as the late workers, when we fail to use our gifts 
as faithful as the late workers, when we fail to witness as boldly as the late workers, sometimes God tells us to witness to someone and we be like, God, is it really you? Is it really, is, is it, is it this, are you telling me to, to go into the workplace and, and tell somebody that has been treating me wrong, to tell somebody that hurt me, to tell somebody that lied on me? Is it real for you to go and tell, to offer them forgiveness? Or when we fail to give all that we are and to sacrifice when we fail to love, when we fail to respond kindly, when we fail to be unselfish, when we fail to relate as loving as the late workers, when we fail to endure as patient as the late workers, these late workers endured, they was patient. They waited all day for just one person to select them. When we fail to look for the return of Christ as hopeful as the late workers, many people who are last now will be first, and the people who are first now will be last. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are count, counterfeit. Some people are not real. Some people are only doing it just because they just want to see. They just want to be seen. Not willing to give all that they have. They are, as the rich young ruler, just unwilling. The price of discipleship is too great. The price of discipleship, it causes us something it causes us to to be nice when people are, are are mean it causes us to turn away when someone may have said something kindly but in this if we get anything don't be weighed down with the minor things don't be weighed down with the minor things don't be weighed down with the minor sac- with the minor things that we have to go through. God is fair. We serve a fair God. He is calling all laborers to give them their reward. Complaining should not be in our vocabulary. As believers, complaining should not be in our vocabulary. I pray that in today we may have seen ourselves We may have seen how so many times we fail to stay on our assignment. We fail to do the things that God has called us to do. But this reminds us that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to him that endureth to the end. Let let us continue to work while it's day. Because when night come, no man can work. God is looking for a willing vessel. God is looking for someone to say yes. God is looking for someone to say, here I am, Lord, use me. Is that you? Is that you? Are you willing to say yes by all by all means? To pick up your cross and follow God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. God, in this lesson, God, we saw that we all have fallen and came short of your word. But we thank you, oh God, because you are just, you are a fair God, and you will reward us for our labor of work. You will reward us if anyone never noticed, if they never called our name. We just want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We want to hear you say, now enter into my rest. God, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. It's in Jesus name and I say, amen.